100 dice. Welcome to this stateless codecast. This is video number 12 in our series nerddice.com where we build a Ruby on Rails application to manage tabletop role playing. We're in the middle of a uh, an epic where we're setting up user authentications using device. So in the first we kind of had an intro video to kind of the topic and then uh, second video in the um, the epic we installed device but didn't really do any configuration and then the, the previous video we did the uh, configuration for it um, cha made changes to the initializer file and device we had to do some um, some setup with uh, credentials at a an environment level so a test credentials um, and uh, development credentials, etc., so that it, um, we're able to have the device secret key as its own key um, and a device pepper, and then um, making those different environment by environment. We modified our GitHub action to be able to work with that and uh, take the, um, we got a kind of a special GitHub actions version of the encrypted um, secret file and kind of copy and overwrite that using uh, GitHub secrets and the um, the build overrides folder that we've got. Um, so we're there. Um, now it's time to start actually setting up things for a user. So we're going to move this item, add U UUID support, and generate user model into progress. So we'll get started on that. I will Go into my terminal here, and we are going to create a migration. So we will use Rails G migration. I spell it correctly. Got that um, migration file that we've created, and it will be empty because we've it's there's nothing kind of that gets um, the, the Rails migration generator will uh, if you've kind of got add this to that or something like that it'll try to generate information for you here. In this case, it's just a de uh, an empty def change uh, here. And what we're going to do here is enable an yeah, extension and PG crypto. So we'll save that. And we'll run our migration. And we'll see in the schema now, um, we added in um, enable extension PG crypto. So now we should be able to run our device generate user here. I think it's, you go to the Rails G device model. So Rails G device user. So that has generated for us a user model, a user migration, a user test, unit test, model unit test, and uh, a fixture file. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So I'm going to go into the device create users here and the 
the these ones okay so that I think that's coming from device rather than from rail so we'll get rid of that and we will our users table here is going to have to have an argument ID U U I D and then we're going to go in and take a look at we've got here and in the user model so that's the user test which we'll keep handy and then our user model here so um, the default items here I'm going to use all of these except for omni authable for now so we'll add these in registerable recoverable rememberable validatable confirmable lockable time audible trackable okay so now we need to go into our model here and uncomment the attributes that are relevant uncomment the indexes and then we are going to save that we already have and see if we can run our migration And so we've got our users table here now. It's got our indexes. Uh, you can see it's got the um, the ID as a UUID, which is what we want. And then looking in our fixtures file here, we've got kind of a just a completely uh, blank file with no attributes or anything like that so we we don't want that I'm going to um, I'll pause and uh, populate some data into this uh, users.yaml um, file and then we'll, we'll talk through what we did here all right so this is what we have so um, using the uh, the rails fixtures here we've got a um, we can set defaults here so defaults um, we name it and defaults so that we can um, reference it later and what you do is after you take something from it you can overwrite it so we've got like the defaults here uh, we take from that and then we choose a different email and a different password for the DM and do the same thing for the player user here and then stateless is just kind of our um, maybe we'll have like an admin role or something like that that um, we use here so we've got our three users here we should be able to now let's make sure that we haven't broken anything I don't think we need have anything new to migrate so rails test make sure that our fixtures are valid here looks like it they are uh, but we want to actually test that those fixtures are valid so uh, this is something that I will um, 
typically do here in, so our user test right now, it's just test the truth. So um, in our user model has all the different attributes there that we need. Uh, so what I will do is I will uh, add something to my test helper here that um, that gives us the um, the ability to um, to test user fixtures. So I'll um, just it's something I use in kind of all my uh, Rails apps for every model. Um, so I'll just paste it in and then we'll we'll talk through it. All right, so we've got our uh, th this um, pasted in. Um, I'll let a comment for it after um, after I, the, the next time I pause. But what we're doing here is we pass in a class name for this, and it will take that. So in this case, user dot all dot each dot do uh, or each do, and then it'll take a block model record. Uh, we'll assert that that model record is valid. And uh, if it's not valid, we'll um, kind of have the error message invalid user in this case. Uh, and then with the, um, the fixture, it'll inspect it and then uh, pre uh, present the error messages. So got that. And then I guess this is going to wind up being too long here. Uh, well, we'll let RuboCop deal with that. But then in our user test here, so test, right now we have test the truth. We want to change this to test that it As have just valid fixtures, and then we will just execute here run model fixture tests for user. Now we should have um, a passing example here, we hope. Actually, let's see if we can make it fail. Oh, no. Yeah, we'll uh, make a password that's too short. That. So this is our failing case. We should see a failure here. succeeded with the three assertions. So it might be because it's it's the uh, encrypted password here. So we're uh, it's already to the point where it's being um, encrypted. So that um, there may, there may be a way to make this invalid, but for right now. We'll let it um, let it just run here. One run, three assertions, and then we want to run RuboCop. So got a bunch of them are correctable. Let's 
top level comment. All right, that's a It's just a quote style that we'll let that auto correct. Um, missing documentation comment. Um, devise create users. ABC size. We have to disable that for our migrations here. So we'll go into RuboCop. And what was the name of that? Metrics ABC size. not want that apply to apply to our db migrate folder because most of that is generated all right multi-line method call brace layout Same thing with method length. We want to do the same thing that we just did with ABC size. We've already got one for method length, so we just add that. Down to eight. Five of them are correctable. Three of them are documentation comments. All right, so we'll RuboCop dash a down to three and they're all top level documentation comment related so we've got our test helper still provides what we want. Okay, good there. Now we'll do some commenting. So we've got a comment here and then we want documentation comments on our Device create users, add UID, UUID support, and test helper. So I'll pause and write those comments. All right, so I've got documentation comments on these classes. Let's see if we are 
green from a RuboCop standpoint. Make sure we're good from a test standpoint. Take a look at our status here. So we add some exclusions. We add device for users to the um, application routes. We migrated new tables into our schema, added some comments, added our run model fixture tests, and then we added new um, user db migrate, our fixture file, and our user test. So let's close tabs to the right and make sure that we don't have anything unsaved and we can do a git add here. This gives us what we want. Let me take a look at our UUID support, generate user model. I think that gives us what we want there. Look at our issue, make sure there isn't anything Okay, UUID, so that is being taken care of by this subtask. And I think we're good to commit. So we'll do a git commit and we'll sign it. Uh, I will pause and write my message. All right, so we've got our commit message here. We will push to the origin. While I'm at it, I'm going to, I think I forgot to do this earlier. Yeah, let's up delete the upgrade 704 branch. And from the remote, So while we're doing that, we will check in on our action still in progress. We'll go in and update our checkbox on issue. Still running. Well, oh, we just turned green. All right, so we can go in and close this subtask, and we'll see you in the next video. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.